Remember the think pink scene in the film Funny Face? All of a sudden, everyone is told to banish the beige and the black and think pink. Suddenly, everything is pink. Everyone is wearing pink, the doors are painted pink. All of the girls in the fashion magazine office are wearing pink, except the fashion editor, Miss Prescott. One of the girls says to her, but Miss Prescott, why aren't you wearing pink? And she replies, me? I wouldn't be caught dead. I have to admit that this would be my attitude too. Things have changed in the last few years and people have started to take a new attitude towards pink, which is the subject of this exhibition. Pink, the history of a punk, pretty, powerful color, looks at 300 years of pink in fashion. Pink provokes strong feelings of attraction and repulsion. In fact, it's been called the most divisive of colors. When she learned that tens of thousands of women were preparing to wear pink pussy hats to the Women's March in Washington, D.C., a columnist for the Washington Post warned, sisters, back away from the pink. She said it might seem cute and fun to wear pink hats, but the issues facing women were serious and pink risked trivializing the issues. So one of the questions that is raised in this exhibition is, why is pink an unserious color? How has it been associated so strongly with, on the one hand, prettiness, romanticism, femininity, and on the other hand, a kind of terminal lack of seriousness, so that a lot of people will want to avoid it. Pink obviously exists in nature, there are pink flowers, for example. But as the color historian Michelle Pastoreau points out, color is a cultural construct. It's society that gives color its meaning. And that, I think, will become clear as visitors go through and see how our ideas about pink have changed. The first room looks at what you might call the typical Euro-American view of pink today, that it's a feminine color. So we look at a wide variety of pink dresses from the 1850s through the 1990s that express the idea of pretty femininity. And then we also have a diorama which looks at the pinkification of girls' culture from the middle of the 20th century to the present. All those pink toys, pink princess dresses. The second room complicates our image of pink. We look further back in time, and we look across world history to see how the symbolism and significance of pink have changed. In the 18th century, pink was an extremely fashionable color for both men and women, just as it is today in the aftermath of millennial pink. We'll also look at how the gender binary of pink for girls versus blue for boys came into being. It hasn't always been that way. It took place gradually over the course of the 19th and early 20th century, mostly as a result of marketing campaigns to sell more children's clothes. And as late as 1927, many Americans couldn't agree about which color went with which gender. We'll also look at how, in many other cultures around the world, pink has traditionally been worn by both men and women. Millennial pink was a reaction against all the cliches associated with feminine pink, which had so much to do with stereotypes of femininity, from sweet and innocent to edgy and erotic. Think of all the names we've given pink. Baby pink, Barbie pink, blush pink. We think of hot pink, lingerie pink. All of these reflect different attitudes towards women, often rather simplistic attitudes. In recent years, though, pink has undergone a change. From being very sweet and girly, pink has increasingly been seen as cool and androgynous. How did this happen? Even within Euro-American culture, pink had alternative meanings. For example, within the African diaspora, pink was much more accepted as a color, both for men and for women. And we see this entering into popular culture so that someone like Elvis Presley with his pink Cadillac was influenced by Sugar Ray Robinson. We see how the Harlem rapper Cameron wore pink mink to New York Fashion Week in 2002, 
launching an enduring trend for men to wear pink. And we see how the eroticism of pink has changed from being something very patriarchal, woman as flower with only a short period of time to be beautiful, to a much more liberated idea of pink expressed, for example, in Janelle Monae's single, Pink. Pink has a long and illustrious history in fashion, from Madame de Pompadour's Pompadour Pink in the 18th century, to Scaparelli's Shocking Pink, to Prada's Candy Pink. Today, pink continues to be a pretty color, but in the process, it's also become a punk and powerful color. I hope you enjoy the exhibition. <laughs>